Okay, let's talk about shame and self-blame. Shame and self-blame are common emotional experiences for trauma survivors. When we're talking about shame in this uh, context here, we're talking about toxic shame. And we're talking about self-blame. We're not talking about healthy guilt, right? So what's the difference between toxic shame and healthy guilt? Well, healthy guilt is a feeling that we allow, that we choose to have, uh, because it's an expression of our values. So when we feel that we violated our own values, then we allow ourselves to feel, to experience a healthy guilt. This is an expression of our goodness, of us being self-governed, giving a, a self-limitation that we're imposing on our own authority, on our own actions to show, hey, I have a limit to how far I'm willing to go and I cross that line and now uh, I'm choosing to feel guilty. But it's important that you recognize this, this aspect, you are choosing to feel guilty. It, it's coming from a place of personal power and you'll allow yourself to feel guilty for as long as you want to when you have healthy guilt, for as long as you feel is necessary. Uh, but when you're, when you have healthy guilt, it's tempered by uh, your purpose, your personal pride, and your personal power. So ultimately, at a certain point, because you're going to have a healthy level of pride, you're going to say, okay, now I need to move on. I feel bad. I've repented, so to speak, for, for what I've done. Now it's time for me to move forward and to change and become better as a result of what I've experienced, of the mistakes that I've made. See, really, our mistakes have no value if we're not learning from them. The only value of the past is the information we can extract from the past. So just going in your mind and replaying past events and saying, oh, I'm just so guilty, I feel so guilty, stop. Consciously process, work out your guilt by understanding where you really went wrong, what you did wrong, and how you will move forward. Toxic shame is not what I did is bad, it's I am bad. Healthy guilt is what I did was bad. Toxic shame is not, well, what I did was worthless, it's I am worthless. Toxic shame is all about bringing yourself down and staying lower than everyone else. It's worrying about everyone looking at you in a bad way, in a negative light, and feeling like you are less than everyone else. You are worth less than everyone else. You are not uh, worthy of all the same things and deserving of all the same things as, as everyone else. That is toxic shame. I am not enough. Toxic shame is completely unhelpful. It's maladaptive and it's worthless. It does us no good. It doesn't help us to heal. It holds us back from healing. It does us no good. So if you're a person who experiences toxic shame, you need to set a boundary on your thoughts and say, this is worthless. This is no good to me. I don't want to experience this anymore. And that's regardless of what you're experiencing toxic shame for. Now, this is difficult for trauma survivors because uh, if you've experienced a trauma before, you've learned, or if you've experienced many traumas, you have complex trauma, then you may have learned to self-blame, to look at yourself as the root cause of all badness and all evil that you experience. And so if your parents are fighting, then you're the problem. And maybe you're told that as a child. Maybe you're told you're the reason your family's poor. Maybe you're told... Uh, you're the reason that your mother can't be proud or your brothers can't be proud. And you should be ashamed of what's happened to you, things that you can't even control. And all of that gives us shame identity, which is a whole way of looking at ourselves as if we are less than. But all of that was lies and abuse. That's emotional abuse to, to teach a child to view himself that way. It's mentally abusive. So we need to teach our brain a new way of framing ourselves, a new way of thinking. And so that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. So let's take some examples here. Uh, some people have survivor guilt. Survivor guilt is a self-blame 
technique. It's a way of looking at yourself as as the problem. So survivor guilt is where you have gone through a trauma that it's not even your fault, but you believe that you should have done something to prevent the trauma or you should have been able to stop it or that you're responsible for the harm that occurred or you feel bad for all the people that didn't survive. Have you experienced that? Survivor's guilt. So survivor guilt is not healthy, right? It's toxic shame. It's self-blame. So let's pull out of self-blame and toxic shame. First of all, let's recognize, oh, I have a boundary around shame. I don't experience toxic shame because it's not helpful. It's completely worthless. So recognize right away, you can't come at something and view it from the standpoint of, I am the problem, I am to blame, I am the one, because that's toxic shame, it's not helpful. So how do we reframe that? Give that some thought. Let me give you another example. Some people have shame about their reactions, like how they react to abuse. Uh, maybe they uh, got helpless or scared or started to have an emotional flashback or they felt like they were out of control. So they feel shame about that. Should we continue to walk around feeling less than because we responded that way? No, we need to reframe it. Let me give you another, another example. Um, some people feel like uh, they have shame around their inability to regulate an emotion or their dysregulation. So if they lost their temper or um, if they, there was some reactive abuse or um, something that they did where they called someone out of their name or they just did something and they didn't feel regulated or they just feel like they embarrassed themselves and they feel shame over it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I responded that way. Okay. Should we stay in that in that sense of shame over, the, over those things? It's not going to be helpful, right? Because we have a boundary that we've created now. Shame is not useful. It is completely unacceptable. Toxic shame is totally useless to you. So you must make a decision to completely eliminate toxic shame from your lexicon of emotions and thoughts that you will accept. Does that make sense? Let's take another example. Some people feel shame over their coping mechanisms. Uh, disordered eating, blaming themselves for uh, substance abuse, um, self-harm. These are ways that they're trying to cope with their trauma, but then they feel more shame that they've coped in these maladaptive ways. Now, of course, all these things are unhealthy. That's true. But should we stay in shame identity around, around them? Is that helpful? Isn't it true that it's actually going to bring us deeper in to doing those things if we feel shame like if we use drugs to cope with our pain then we feel shame that we use the drugs and then what happens if you're in shame then you're going to want to turn to something to cope right and then what are you going to turn to so we're creating a loop a cycle for ourselves to keep ourselves down in that so so we need to learn to heal from all of this toxic shame Sometimes we feel shame about the actual trauma that happened to us because it's embarrassing to talk about and we don't want anyone to know. We feel like people do know. And so we feel less than, we feel shame. Sometimes we feel shame about something we legitimately did do wrong. Maybe we really were abusive. We really uh, stole or hurt or were violent. Uh, so should we stay in shame around that? Is that helpful? How do we reframe Something when we legitimately did do something wrong. Or what about uh, feeling shame that you're not farther in your life, like you haven't accomplished more? How do we reframe that? So if you're taking notes, what you want to do on your page, most important thing you have to take from this discussion is toxic shame is unacceptable meaning it's not something that you will accept anymore into your life. This means that when thoughts of toxic shame come up, you will immediately combat them. 
As soon as you start to feel that sense of shame, you immediately fight against it. And you say, nope, I don't accept shame. Period. I don't accept shame. So what will you do? You have to reframe the situation. So let's say you're having survivor's guilt. You were the only one to make it out alive from a car crash or a boat explosion or from your household. You're the only kid to do as well as you've done. Uh, so how should we frame, how should we reframe that instead of, oh my God, I, I can't believe it. Why me? I don't deserve this. I, right? All the shame, the shame. How do we reframe it? Give it a thought. How can you reframe your survivor's guilt? Here's some tools to reframe. Remember personal power. Remember pride, healthy pride. And remember purpose. It's three Ps, I guess. So your, pur your purpose, power, and pride. When you come from the standpoint of purpose, power, and pride, how can you reframe? Uh, oh, why me? How about, well, now I'm in a position to be able to help others. I survived. I don't know why me, but I'm here. So I'm in a position to help. Can you see, feel the sense of personal power I'm taking at this? Now I'm in a position to help others. That's what I'm focusing the energy of the mind on. That pulls me out of shame and gets me into conviction. Uh, now we're going to be productive and actually get something done. Because I'm in personal power, right? In pride, if I come from a prideful standpoint, not not a arrogant prideful, but from a healthy pride standpoint, I'm I'm happy. I'm grateful that I survived. I'm grateful that whatever I had in me, I was strong enough. I'm proud of the fact that I was strong. Does that make sense? We need to reframe it. Now, what happens when we start thinking about it that way? It will change the chemicals. So all of a sudden, the subconscious mind will release a different chemical hormonal cocktail, and the whole energy state of our being in our body is different. Now we're not in shame. Now we're in healthy pride, personal power, and we're able to drive back towards our purpose. Everything comes back to your purpose. We have to be able to put the energy of the mind on our purpose in life. We can't do that if we're in shame. Because that's making us weak. So let's take another example. If we feel bad about our reactions, we're in shame over the way that we've reacted. Uh, we were too scared. We were helpless. We were out of control. We didn't do enough to stop it. Um, how do you reframe? Come from a position of the three Ps. Personal power. Pride. And purpose. What do you got? When you look at the way that you reacted in the past and you go from a standpoint of personal power, you're going to say, yeah, I did do that and I think I can do better. So next time I will respond this way and you go directly into what's going to be more healthy. If you're coming from the standpoint of pride, then what might you say? How can you reframe the fact that you reacted badly from a standpoint of pride? How about... Well, it's understandable because I was being traumatized. It's understandable because I was being abused. It's a little bit of healthy pride. Like, yeah, that was the best I could have done. Anybody would have responded that way. A little bit of healthy pride there. And then we get into purpose. Okay, well, now that I've experienced that, now that I've gone through that, now that I know what that's like, I want to heal. I want to be a survivor that can turn around and help others in the future. And so now we're in that personal power, that pride, and that purpose. You gotta reframe if you don't wanna live in shame. Let's take another example. Let's say our coping mechanisms are maladaptive and we're feeling shame around that, blaming ourselves for substance abuse. We got into self-harm, disordered eating. Shame identity is, oh, I'm terrible, I'm awful, I did this again. What does personal pride say? What, is, what does healthy pride say? Again, I survived. 
I'm still here, personal power says, so therefore I can make a difference. And now I know better than to do things that way. So I won't do that anymore. I won't turn to the substance anymore. I have the, I believe I can overcome this. I can overcome these addictions, right? Personal power is all about feeling like what you're capable of and focusing the mind on what you're capable of, what you can do. And then you take your purpose, you lack purpose in mind. You look at this scenario, it's like, hey, this is something I can learn from. My story is going to be even more powerful because of what I've had to overcome. You see what I've done there? Now, when I'm thinking like that, and I focus my mind on that, do I feel shame anymore? No. And I refuse to, because shame is unacceptable. Period. It's not helpful. It's unacceptable. That's the way you have to feel. Like, oh, there. No, that's unacceptable. I never, I never allow myself to feel shame. That's got to be your, your, your motto, your belief, your command to your subconscious mind. I never allow myself to feel shame. Is this making sense? Let's keep healing. How do we reframe uh, our emotional dysregulation? We yelled, we screamed, we abused, we did, we, we, we weren't, we weren't the way we wanted to be. How do we reframe that? Well, I'm looking at it from a standpoint of personal power. Okay, now I know. I'm not going to respond like that next time. I believe I can get my temper under control. I believe I can control my hands, control my lips, control my mouth. All right? Personal power, purpose. Now from now on and into the future, I want to be this type of person. All right? From standpoint of pride, I, I understand why I act that way considering how my mom was, how my dad was. But it's up to me now. I know I can do this. If there's anyone who can beat it, I can beat it. What if we feel shame around the very trauma that we experience because we're embarrassed? We were assaulted, we were accosted, we were molested. Um, maybe there's something just in our society that what happened to us is the one thing that people don't like to talk about. People don't want to acknowledge it. Or as a man, you were abused by your wife or a woman. And so maybe there's some shame around that. How do we reframe that from a standpoint of personal pride? About, I'm glad I survived. I'm glad I'm still here. If you're a man, maybe you're proud. You can be proud of the fact that you didn't abuse in return throughout your experience. In terms of purpose, now you're in a position to be able to help others and raise awareness about the type of thing that happens. Uh, from the standpoint of purpose, now you know what type of person, what type of woman that you need to navigate. From the standpoint of purpose, now, because of what you went through, as dark as it is, as shameful as it seems to be in, in our society, it gives you credibility. It gives you credibility that you've gone through that. Focus on that aspect. Personal power. I can prevent myself from being in these types of relationships with these types of people. Personal power. I can avoid that side of town. Personal power. What can I do? What can I do? I can build my business. I can start a fashion line. I can write my children's book. There's so much I can do. The things in personal power that we focus our mind on don't even have to be directly related. Sometimes it's just the fact that we did this despite the fact that we experienced that abuse. And as a result, what happens? The energy of the mind focuses on what we can do and it multiplies what we can do. Now we're no longer living in shame identity, we're creating our own identity. One in power and pride and purpose. Does that make sense? Okay, good, so, so we're reframing so that we don't have to live in shame. We're creating a new frame so that we don't have to live in shame. But how the heck do you create a new frame when you really did do something wrong? You really were abusive, you really did something criminal, you really lied, did something immoral. You really did. How, do we, how, well, how am I gonna reframe that from the standpoint of personal pride? Understand this, 
you still have the responsibility and the authority to preserve yourself. And so just deciding, well, since I did something wrong, I just need to beat myself up and I, I, don't, I don't have the right to, to tell myself that, to judge myself uh, and, and say that I'm uh, all better or what. No, 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 no. You have the authority to decide how much guilt you will feel about a situation. Toxic shame is done. It's gone. It's maladaptive. We don't do that anymore. You understand? Set the boundary. Now, did you do something wrong? Because if you did, then maybe it is proper for you to consciously allow yourself to feel some guilt. Why? Because it's your own natural internal justice system. So you're going to allow yourself to feel the, the feelings of guilt because you've done something that violates your values. But you got to put a limitation on it. This is not, oh, I'm going to be guilty the rest of my life. No, it's just, okay, look, I'm going to feel this right now because that was wrong. But I'm not going to beat myself up for years and years to come. That's not appropriate. I need to learn from the past, extract the information, extract the value, the data from the lessons of the past. And that's it. I leave it behind. There's a certain point where you're going to forgive yourself at the end and move forward. Not because you're good, not because it's what you deserve, because that's the only thing that works. Keeping yourself in toxic shame for the rest of your life is just over punishing yourself and it's not, nobody's admiring you for being more noble. The only thing that's gonna happen is you become maladaptive and then you get sick and then you're not capable and then it affects your financial health and your mental health and your physical health and then everyone just looks at you and shakes their head and says, oh, he was never the same after that one thing that happened. That's not helpful. That's not helpful. What did you accomplish with that? Nothing. So, so that's not going to work. Overcome. To overcome, you're going to have to get to a point again where you say, all right, I felt my guilt. I did what I did. Now, personal pride. Well, I have the ability to be better and I choose to be better. Personal power. I'm not going to do that again. I've learned from my mistakes. Now I want to accomplish something I can be proud of and, and add that to my name and my legacy. Purpose. Legacy. Legacy. What am I going to do now? What am I building? Where am I going? I'm moving forward. Despite the fact that I made mistakes in the past. See how everything's coming from those three Ps. The personal power says, I choose to feel the guilt. I choose when the guilt is enough and I move forward. You decide. You understand? You decide. Don't wait around for some sign from heaven or someone else to come down and say, hey, it's okay now, you can feel better about yourself. It's not coming. You are the judge of you, the arbiter. You are the executioner. When it comes to your personal moral standards, you have to hold yourself accountable. So you decide. Okay. All right. Enough is enough. Time to move on. Again, we don't do this based on how we feel. We do this based on what's best because we're driven toward purpose. We are purpose-driven people. And we're also love-driven. And when we're love-driven, that means we're compassionate. And if you're compassionate, that means there's mercy, there's empathy. And so you have to have mercy as a part of your personality in order to be truly a balanced person. And that means mercy and forgiveness for yourself as well. Does that make sense? So what we've done here is we've learned to reframe situations using three Ps so that we're not living in shame and shame identity. Someone who's in shame identity, everything brings them shame all the time. So much so that they can even get a job promotion and they feel ashamed. In fact, I uh, one client I worked with, um, she was trying to quit her job and she successfully put in her two weeks notice and she got another job. Um, at another place that she had wanted to work for some time, in fact. And now uh, there was a personal tragedy in her life before the two weeks were up. But she chose not to give in and not to try to get out of work and finishing her two weeks. She just went in there like a soldier. 
and kept working despite the personal tragedy. But when word got around that she had suffered this personal tragedy in her personal life, her boss called her in and said, hey, I heard what happened. Why don't you take the rest of the two weeks off? You know, you're almost finished with it. Just go home uh, because of what she had gone through. It was necessary. It was a, it was a kindness that he was obligated to show because word had spread that this happened to her and she was still coming to work at a place that she had already quit. And so when her boss said, why don't you just go home? This woman felt ashamed. She felt like you're not even going to allow me the dignity of finishing my two weeks. But you see, the reason why she looked at it that way was because she already had the neural pathways of a shame identity, negative mindset thinker. And so when we worked on it, we talked about it, we were able to reframe it where she realized this is a victory. She didn't quit or give, I'm sorry, she quit her job, but she didn't give up on finishing her two weeks. She stuck it out despite the abusive environment. And so now that he's saying, hey, just go home early, uh, she wins because she doesn't have to continue to come to work in this abusive, wretched environment. But she just needs to frame it as a victory. She needs to see it as a victory so that she can walk out with her head high this is not embarrassing for her. This is not a shame for her. This is a victory. She fulfilled her obligations. And so likewise, I want you to be able to view your life and your events as a victory and get out of shame identity and get into reframing things according to your personal power, your purpose. And what was the other P? Oh yes, healthy pride.